I came across a very interesting EEG a few days ago. This is a 24-year-old person who had been episodes of unresponsiveness that would last from few seconds to a few minutes. And then she would snap out of it. There was no obvious motor activity. And basically, the patient was sent for an outpatient EEG. And this is the EEG. Now, we are recording, as you can see, that we are recording at a uh, low frequency filter of 1 hertz, high frequency filter of 70 hertz. And the gain here is 7 microvolts per millimeter. So as we see this EEG, you can see that this is a pretty high amplitude sharply contoured, slow activity, each channel is overlapping the other channel because I've not adjusted the amplitudes yet. And then this is what keeps going on. And then all of a sudden, you can notice, you notice that this high amplitude is gone and the EEG seems to normalize over here. And this happens throughout the recording. And again, you see this again goes into this high amplitude slowing. If I cut down the gain here, you will realize now we are looking at 15 microvolts per millimeter. You can see a clear distinction between this background in the first two seconds and the following background. And then this comes in. Now we are looking at 15 microvolts and it happens for a good 20 to 30 seconds and it is over. These are eye blink artifacts. Stays like that for another 10, 15 seconds. And now let me just crank up the sensitivity here. So we are now again looking at seven microvolts per millimeter. And you can see these high amplitude discharges that come for 20, 30 seconds and then disappear. Now, the interesting thing is when the patient was asked questions while she was in the EEG lab, when the technician asked questions, the patient was unable to respond during the times of these high amplitude, sharply contoured slowing, but was able to respond at other times. So this is a very classic case of non-convulsive status epilepticus. Patient, I mean, this continued for good 20, 25 minutes. Patient was sent to the emergency room. Interestingly, patient was loaded with an anti-seizure medication. And all of a sudden, she basically literally woke up from sort of a dreamlike state. Uh, so EEG, consider EEG as an extension of neurological examination. Even if you're not certain if a person is in status epilepticus, even if you don't see anything obvious on motor examination, if there is a person who goes, who blanks out, who spaces out, who loses awareness, partially or completely loses consciousness, partially or completely is having episodes, unexplained episodes that are stereotypical, always consider the possibility of uh, non-convulsive status epilepticus. I mean, of course, you have to think about other possibilities as well, but that will be one of the differential diagnoses to consider. So I just wanted to illustrate that case. I hope that you find it useful. Let me just cut down the gain here just so that you can see. Now we are looking at 20 microvolts per millimeter, and you can still see, I mean, this EEG now looks more slow, does not have that overlap because I've cut down the gain, but you will see the difference as it transitions from this high amplitude activity to this seemingly normal, uh, normal looking EG, and then goes back into that high amplitude activity, which is what represents seizures. Thank you for your attention. I hope you use this EEG for some uh, decision making in your practice.